Hello, everybody. Welcome to DC Time. I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Thanks again for joining us. We are glad and happy to get together again. Chris and I, Chris and I, we uh, love to get in, getting together personally and just sharing about our week or our journey or where we're at. And so we love. Yeah, we're going to turn the camera on and we're going to keep doing this. Like we said last time, as long as Father has us doing this, we're going to keep doing it. Yeah, bring somebody a little encouragement mm -hmm. as they go mm -hmm. along their journey. That would be uh, a goal that we would right. want to do or desire for us. We was talking today. <laughs> we both want to, but who doesn't want this? We want to, uh, when we say things, we want them to be true. Right? Who? Yeah. Why, it sounds so simple. But, I know. Yeah. But uh, thank you, Captain Obvious. I, I know. <laughs> That's like, what well, it's yeah. trying to think of a way to say that. Why is that so complicated? Like we we want to yeah. share truth, but I think what's behind what I'm saying here is we realize Chris and I realize how much error, how much things in the past, and even things in the future, we're not going to see everything exactly right. Right. And that can get a little scary or a little weird. Uh, but yeah, I shudder to think, oh, I could have, you know, I don't want to be telling somebody something that's false. Um, but I've done that. Well, and I would also add to that, and yet today we stand in a place where we understand the operation God has about error. Yeah. That, that Father uses error to bring light. Meaning, I've been in error. Mm -hmm. That comes first. Yeah, that is amazing. Um, that that's, uh, that's why I said earlier upstairs, confirmation again, once again, that something has changed. Something is bigger. Something is more clear. That I'm like, error can be a good thing. Error has taught me so much. Mm -hmm. You know, our God's used error to teach me so much. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like I said, we don't want to be in error. You don't want to say things that aren't true. But, man, it's wonderful to find out, like, oh, I, I wasn't seeing that right. Because it's so It's great awesome to be in to see, error inspired yeah. by Father. Yeah, to see, a diff, to see the other side, to come out of something. So, yeah. yep. all right, a couple things here. A couple scriptures, maybe. And then Chris is going to talk about it. But in this article, along with what we're saying right now, the second paragraph, The Appreciation of God by A. E. Nock, mm -hmm. he says, almost all of us are short-sighted. <laughs> so, okay, we, we're we kind of saying that now. We see, And so almost all of us are short-sighted. We see a part of the way, but we, we do not see the end. So we confuse the going, the journey, with the goal, mm -hmm. the end goal. Um, I'm going to read here from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. This is Paul speaking. Yet when I have become a man, I've discarded that which is of, of minors. For at present we are observing by means of a mirror in an enigma, yet then face to face. At present I know out of an installment, yet then I shall recognize according as I am recognized also. Mm. Yet now are remaining faith, expectation, love. These three, yet the greatest of these is love. Be pursuing love. Mm -hmm. Chris has said that several times recently as some sort of a, uh, an area to concentrate on, something we want to pursue. We want to be pursuing love. Yeah, these words are powerful words mm -hmm. by the Apostle Paul. At the time, it's amazing to look at his life, his journey, and, and to see... Well, we have now faith, expectation, love, be pursuing love. So we can't go wrong there. No. Nope. Like I said, in nope. all the different perspectives and how we see things differently and how we learn through error. So we find ourselves, ourselves, that's everybody else too, along their journey. They're in error at times. Um, so when those two things you know, come up against each other sometimes in our relationships, it's good to be pursuing love, to see yep. the bigger picture. Yep, and that is a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. I appreciate uh, you saying it that way. That is backing up a little bit and seeing the bigger picture to always be pursuing love. Right, So we can get caught up in the, you know, we think, well, we got to get it all just right. Well, none yeah. of us have it, 
have it all. I mean, we can it's, barely see, I think. I mean, I think it's drastic how many layers of error and how we do get it all confused. It, it is confusing the going with the go, mm -hmm. really. It is, um, for sure. I'm back in the article again, The Appreciation of God. I I've, I've, uh, was in it again this week and in, again this morning. Um, one of the things I wanted to um, look at was the red text at the beginning of this article. Um, Judgment is God's strange work. He uses it on the way. <laughs> Men make it the end. I just love the way Knock writes. Um, no matter how an unbeliever is dealt with, whether he dies as a result of sin or by the direct intervention of God, whether he be cast into outer darkness or into Gehenna, this is not his end. God does not reach his goal in any of his disciplinary measures. That's not when the goal is reached. Uh, these only prepare his creatures for it. Let us not confuse the going with the goal. Um, that is so incredible to think and just meditate on what he's saying there. Because man does put judgment at the end. And, and why not? Uh, revelations, we have Revelations as the last book of the Bible. The unveiling of Jesus Christ. That's the last book of the Bible. I was blown away when someone told me that Paul's letters were not in order. I couldn't believe that Scripture was out of order. And then when I see in Colossians, I think it's 125, where Paul fills full the Word of God. It made me think, you know what? When I read Revelations, I ought to then go right into Ephesians and Colossians, mm -hmm. into the last two books. And I tend to prefer that better than, than reading Revelations. And many of us, man, mankind says that's the culmination of, of all. And even in here, um, Nock mentions that, that uh, they go up to the lake of fire, all of that stuff, and they don't continue on even when the new heaven and earth and the new Jerusalem comes down. They've... They've ended it at the lake of fire in some instances. Um, yeah, it, it's upsetting to think the things we used to think or why, mm -hmm. you know, I want to ask the question, why? Why do we just give over to those kind of beliefs mm -hmm. or why does mankind, so many people see it that way or see scripture, those judgment and these harsh things, you know, we see that that's the end when... They don't live their lives like that or as a responsible citizen in, in a society. You don't live like that. You don't set up rules like that. You don't do that as parents. Right. You don't let, you know, anything you set up is for, you're trying, you're attempting yeah. to get, like, to discipline a child. Well, what, why would you do that? You yeah, do the that. goal is not, not the, the punishment. Thing. No, you're yeah. trying to do something else. You're trying yeah. to, to do something to make something better or then within the child parent relationship is out of love you know you want to make a situation better well why wouldn't god why wouldn't father god have a goal like, why wouldn't we believe that oh well he wants to do that he wants to make things better eventually or he's going to get things but mm -hmm. especially with all the verses we got we read one last week colossians 1 20 when everything's reconciled back everything's right. coming back to god yeah. why don't we believe that that ever what <laughs> about first timothy and then you can go on. Yeah. First Timothy, uh, is it 2 4? Yeah. Two, four. Three? Yep. I'm in second here. Here's First Timothy 2 4. Says, um, back up in three, for this is ideal and welcome in sight of our Savior God, who wills that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of truth. Okay. This is Father God. This is God mm -hmm. in Scripture. We have here saying this figure, this being, 
that we can't even understand. He wills all his man, everything he's created to come back, to be saved, come into a realization of the truth. Yeah. And we as man have the whatever it takes, whatever's in us to say, that's not going to happen. I know that that's amazing. I remember that won't happen. He, I remember. he wants it. He just wants it, but he he's not he's not going to get it. That yeah. won't happen. I remember when I saw that verse in the light we're talking about it today. And you 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 have to understand that Dean and I believe when that happens, it's not our scholarship or our work. Father turns the light on. Mm-hmm. And we see a verse in a different way than we ever saw it before. Right. You know, sometimes it just slips through your, you know, you read a paragraph and you read it four or five times, you just still don't know what you read. When I saw this, I remember a, a human free will discussion with my parents in the backyard. And I remember bringing up this verse to them and saying, whose will is stronger? Mm-hmm. This is the creator who made all things. And he wills that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of the truth. And somehow, they tended to lean towards the idea that yet the creatures will not to pursue this relationship would somehow interfere with that. And I knew that's how I used to think too. Mm-hmm. Um it shows what we're under. Yeah. And there again, the response out of that now, hopefully, and that's hopefully with Chris and I's journey, what we desire. We desire truth. So where would that lead us? That leads us into what I read earlier. It leads us to that pursuing love. Yeah. To where our heart would just go out to any opposition to these things we would just love. Yep. You would just love. Exactly. And it's okay. We all we all are opposed to these things of God. It's just in us. And yep. Yep, totally. We can't see it. Can't see it all. Uh, in, in relation to that scripture, Knox says, we turn to texts which prove that unbelievers will be lost or destroyed. And with these passages, we dim the great declaration of God, of that God wills that salvation of all. Mm-hmm. We should illumine them with the later and higher revelation. We find God's enemies in the fiery lake at what seems to be the close of revelation and misuse this fact to deny God's declaration that all will be reconciled in Colossians 1.20, which we believe comes after revelation. We should not take one to destroy the other, but believe both to be true. For reconciliation follows estrangement, and it alone accords with God's final goal. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch upon, uh, the, the end of this article, and as only Knock can, um, here we have the great contrast between man's miserable self-made destiny and God's grand and gracious goal. Man not only destroys God's creatures, but undermines his deity and robs him of the appreciation of his heart's handiwork. God's goal not only upholds his deity, but gives his creatures such confidence in him that all concern as to his love and power disappears. They willingly, yes, eagerly leave themselves in his hands without any assurance whatever on his part as to his intentions. This is totally reliant on Father. Faith and hope are no longer needed. So they vanish and only love remains. Knowing him as God, limitless in power and wisdom, and as essential love, essential love, they prefer to remain in fond anticipation of that which the ear hears not, to which the heart of man cannot ascend, that which God makes ready for those who are loving him. They rely on his word, they delight in his ways, and they revel in the appreciation of him. To come to the point where you think 
faith and hope would vanish. They're, they're no longer necessary. The only thing left is love. Mm-hmm. Think about what faith and hope are, the expectation. Yeah, there's the expectation we ha- that is coming. To me, we it's, it's, what's it's coming. what we need on the weary way yeah. to make it to the end, to endure. Mm-hmm. Once we're there, they're no longer needed. Yeah. Love remains. That's it. Yeah. Can't say more than that. No, that's <laughs> wonderful. All right, we'll leave you at that. So thanks again for joining us, and uh, we'll see you all next week. See you.